Hey, it's me, your favorite artist you obviously subscribe to. Do you sometimes feel like your artwork takes years to complete? Do you maybe feel like the drawing you made isn't exactly how you imagined it in your head? Or maybe you just feel like your art looks unproportional or it lacks structure? Well, today we're gonna fix those frustrations you have by talking about the process of art and the procedure you should be following to make your art process organized, efficient, and better. I assume you already have an idea of what the art process is like. You sketch your drawing and then you line art it and then you color it, simple as that, right? Well, it seems like that, but when you put these steps into practice, you'll soon realize that what you're drawing isn't the same as what you imagined in your head. It seems like there are more steps than you think there is, and I'm going to be talking about those steps. If you're interested in using the brushes I use for my illustrations, be sure to check out my Patreon. These brushes are completely free, so don't worry about having to pay anything. If you are interested in supporting me though, check out my PSD files. You can have access to all of them for as little as $3. With these files, you'll have access to the individual layers of my illustrations, so you can practice your coloring, line art, or you can just see how I play around with layer effects. It would mean a lot if you supported my work. Anyways, back to the video. As you can see here, there are seven basic steps that I'm going to be talking to you about. These are the steps that I myself follow when it comes to any drawing I'm going to work on. You can add or remove some steps, but it should just kind of resemble what I have here. Before we get into talking about them individually, let me explain what these color words mean. The black words are my names for the steps, and that's pretty self-explanatory. The red words are words that I want you to associate with these steps, so you can understand the step's purpose. Think about it as the step's description compressed into one word. The green word is basically the most important element you need to focus on in the step. If you in some way mess up the green word, or you're not focusing on it as much, this can and will affect the result of your final drawing, so it is important that you remember it. When you are following this art process, it is also important that you do not skip, you do not half-ass, and you do not decide to move on without finishing a prior step, because that will be the worst mistake you can make in your art. If you skip a step, you are basically fucking up these green words, which I said before is something you do not want to do. I will explain during each individual step what will happen if you decide to half-ass it. So now that I've explained everything, I think we can move on to our first step. The first thing we will be looking at are thumbnails. Thumbnails are a quick 2-5 to five minute sketch that help you plan out the composition of your drawing. They're useful to get your creative mindset going and to just understand what direction you want your art piece to go. A word that you want to remind yourself, which is this red word, when you're doing this step is ideas or planning. This step should only serve as a way as to help yourself understand the type of drawing you feel like making. Try not to focus too much on how the people or backgrounds you make look. Instead, focus on how they're positioned, posed, or placed. Which basically leads us to our green word, which is remember what you need to focus on during this step, which is composition. Composition is the way elements in your art piece are arranged, which is basically what I was specifying earlier. So here's an example of Character thumbnails. So this artist decided to create five different thumbnails of what could be the same character. As you can see, this uh, this artist didn't focus on the details very much. As you can see, like some of the clothings don't have like wrinkles in the middle of them. They're just kind of, you know, outlines of what the shape could look like. Oh, I just had a bad voice crack there. The main thing this uh, this artist focused on was the positioning of the clothes, maybe the type of clothing they wore the 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 characters posing and how the items could be like aligned with the character these are just very quick sketches that just got his ideas flowing as you can see he didn't really he didn't even focus on like these feet as much these are just quick ideas of shoes that the character could have but these are mostly just to plan maybe like the composition of the character's posing or just the composition of the character's design here's another version of thumbnails this one's more focusing on backgrounds and like multiple characters with each other, less about character design. There are nine different thumbnails of how the same scene could be reenact. Maybe it's like a movie scene, you know? These are just like nine different versions of what could be the same movie scene. These are just all focused on like a composition that they could go with. The best part about having multiple thumbnails is that if you don't like a certain part of one of them, you can always mix them. So imagine I don't like the way this white guy right here is posed. But I like the way he's posed here, but I don't like the way this thing is posed, but I like the way it's posed here. You can always mix them together. So let's say I just took this guy from here and I just put him, you know, over here. You can mix them, which is the good thing about having multiple thumbnails. If you don't like the part of one thumbnail, you could just use another part from a different thumbnail. Same thing with this character design. Maybe I don't like this pose right here, but I do like 
his clothing. So I want to put the clothing on, let's say this guy's pose. So it's always good to have multiple thumbnails to get your creative juices flowing and just like understand what kind of direction you want to go with your art. Remember that this green word is what you need to focus on. If you skip this step and go straight to the next one, it's going to be difficult to understand what direction you want your drawing to go. You are doing twice the work in a single step, which will exhaust your mind and make your art feel unstructured, which goes noticeable. Here's an example of a drawing I did without a thumbnail. Okay, as you can see, I already did my second step, all right? This is basically my first building block to my sketch draft, which I'll explain building blocks later. But this was the first part to my sketch draft and I just skipped the thumbnail. As you can see, let's see the result of what this got me. And as you can see, the drawing itself is not bad, but the pose reeks of just being unplanned, just kind of like, like I kind of winged the pose, like, like, oh, I'm gonna draw the head first. And then, oh, I kind of like want a torso. And then I want her arms doing this. And then I'm gonna make her torso bend. And then uh, I'm gonna do the thighs like that. And yeah, and by the time I actually drew my character, I realized that it just kind of felt unplanned. And unlike the easiness of just editing a thumbnail, it's gonna be hard to fix this because I already drew the character. It it's gonna be kind of hard to just, erase and then just fix a part of that I don't like. I would just have to restart this drawing from scratch. Cause it feels very stiff and very unnatural. There's an, there, are, there are ways to make this pose feel more natural and less forced. But here, since I didn't really plan it, just it, it felt more forced than it should have. And if you don't wanna do multiple thumbnails, that's fine. You could just do a quick, super quick sketch of just one thumbnail. So let's say, I want to do a character who's kind of, right, I got an idea. I want to do a character who's facing their back towards the view. Their leg is like this. And then let's say their arms like this. And then they have like a giant uh, scythe. And then, yeah, that that's a composition right there. And let's say maybe I want hit her torso or his torso to be more curved. It's super easy to fix that. If you already did the sketch at this point, it would be super hard to, you know, edit their posing. Like, look at this character. Here, let me merge her entire body. It, it's gonna be super hard to like, kind of show that this character is bending their torso more because their torso is already at like a fixed angle. So it's gonna be more hard to kind of fix that angle. And then this is going to be a, like, this is also going to lead into my line art. So it's gonna show in the final art piece. The thumbnail is not going to show in the final art piece, so it's super easy to just edit it and then just fix it at this point. And then let's say I want a cat here and then I want a dog here and then I want to, I don't, I don't know. It's just going to be super easy to just move those things around before they're drawn. So yeah, so just before you move on to the next step, just be sure your composition is as perfect as it can be because you have minimal ways to tweak it after you're done with this step. So just make sure when you move on, be happy with your composition. So now you got your composition and your thumbnail. So now what? The next step is your sketch draft. So what is a sketch draft? It's basically a rough version of what the final drawing will look like. The difference between this step and a thumbnail is that you will be directly building off of this drawing, unlike a thumbnail where you're just where you're just kind of loosely referencing it. And this drawing, you will now be focusing more on the details of the character, like their anatomy, clothes, hair, and other stuff. So here's an example of what a sketch draft might look like. As you can see, this is the sketch draft, while this is what the final rendered look like. As you can see, unlike a thumbnail, where it kind of just like looks like a bunch of blobs and stuff, this is more defined. And as you can see, this rendered picture is built on top of that sketch draft. The word I want you to associate with this step is building. What I mean by building is that you are going to be basically building your character from the ground up. Just like a house, you are going to be creating supporting pillars that will help you through creating what should roughly be something that resembles what you want the final drawing to look like. Here's an example, let's go to this blob again. Okay, so this blob is basically my thumbnail. I'm going to be referencing this thumbnail, so I'm just gonna kind of put it on to the side. So when I'm creating my sketch draft, what I first usually do is that I start off with the guidelines of my character. As you can see, if you've seen my how to pose video, I got my dynamic lines and yeah, I'm all set to 
create the body. This step right here is a supporting pillar that allows me to create the character's body, which will you, which you will now see here. As you can see, I have this character's body that I directly built on top of this supporting pillar. And then this body is also a supporting pillar that will allow me to sketch my character's accessories, like their clothing, their hair, their eyes, stuff like that. And I'm also here allowed to edit their anatomy, which is what you don't want to do for the thumbnail. But here is the good, uh, a good time to start editing that character's anatomy. Like, oh, maybe this hand's too big, so we can increase it. And maybe this head's too small, so we can also increase this as well. So now when I'm done with the supporting pillar of the body, I can now move on to their accessories, like I've said. So maybe I want their hair to go like this. Maybe I want them to be wearing maybe a dress like this, I guess. I don't know. You understand what I mean. So once again, what I mean by building is that you are building a bunch of supporting blocks that allow you to create a, like, a resemblance of what you want the final drawing to look like. And then the most important element of this step is form. I've talked about form before in my how to shade video, so I'm not gonna go so depth in this one, but basically form is how your artwork feels in a 3D environment. Making your character feel like they're in a 3D environment makes them feel alive and human. So here's an example of a drawing from uh, the character from Mad Father. As you can see, this character might look very expressive even without a face, but I basically drew this character from like five different basic shapes, and I'm gonna show you those shapes in a second. So with this head right here, you can probably tell, but this head is pretty much just a sphere. Even from the way the hair is placed on top of it, I only used a sphere as a reference point. And then this head is also built on that sphere. I have a cylinder here for the neck. Um, yeah, so a cylinder. My shoulders were two spheres with a line connected to it. My upper torso was basically this kind of, um, it has four sides to it. It doesn't look like it, but it has four sides to it. My lower torso was this shape. And then my thighs were basically just like cylinders. Uh, those are kind of, those are kind of cylinders. And then even this dress is pretty much a basic shape. I hope you can see it. This dress is just a flat 2D circle, like laid like a blanket on top of my character. So as you can see, it's pretty much just a circle and then these two bumps are being affected by these two cylinders that I had here. So as you can see, being able to define those 3D shapes, exaggerate that your character is like in a 3D environment and it makes them feel more alive. As you can see, this character doesn't have a face. She pretty much just looks like a doll, but it, it feels human and expressive because it feels like she's in a 3D environment. And it's all because I referenced these shapes here. So yeah, if you want a more in-depth on form, just check out my how to shade video and I explain it a bit further. Form is very important in this specific step because it's difficult to work on this element in future steps and you're going to see why when I talk about the next one. Now that we have our sketch draft, since we have a sketch, is it fine for us to go to line art? Not quite. We still have one more step we need to do before we get onto line art. And that next step is the refine sketch. In this step, we are going to be cleaning our sketch up and adding the details we may have missed from the last step. The difference between this sketch and the last one is that this sketch is meant to be a cleaner transition for the line art phase, which you will understand by the end of this segment. I have an example here of a sketch draft. This sketch draft is helping me with anatomy, like places like see this eye, it, it's supposed to tell me where the eye is, how big the head should be, um, how the hair is going to look. It, like I have everything, her hair, oh, I'm missing her hat because this is an old drawing, okay? Um, I'm very bad at this step because I like to just skip right into my line art, which is very bad for me. But in this drawing, I do end up doing my refined sketch. So as you can see, this is my draft sketch. I have the shape of her head, where her eye is, the anatomy of her ear, how big her neck should be, stuff like that. So in this refined sketch, I'm basically going to be refining everything how I want it to look exactly. As you can see, this sketch is much more cleaner I do reference this, uh, the draft sketch as well, but I'm just adding more details, like how the eye looks, how the ear is shaped. I have the hat this time, how the hair is going to be uh, folded or like strands of hair are going to look. And for YouTube guideline purposes, I can only show the face, so I'm sorry. The word I want you to associate with this step is detail, because instead of having a rough idea of what the final drawing will look like, 
Now you know exactly what the final drawing will look like, but unpolished. You will be going back and drawing details that you may have missed during the sketch draft or redrawing details that might have looked too vague. If you drew your sketch draft correctly, this should be easier. And if you did a good job with your form, your character is guaranteed to look alive in the final result. The green word for this step is legibility. I hope I pronounced that right. Look at the next step in this procedure. It's line art, your final lines for your drawing. Everyone hates line art, but to make it so much easier for you, you need to have everything you want to include in your drawing ready to be traced, because if you don't, you will have to fix things in your line art, which could take forever. You need to have a clear idea of what you are going to be tracing and try not to leave room for interpretation because this will leave some of your objects to look weird, unproportional, or just not at all how you imagined it. Basically, don't make it hard on yourself. Finish everything you're going to include in this step and make line art as easy as tracing. Look what the line art for this drawing looks like. It looks exactly like my refined sketch. It's basically just traced. Here, I'll even do this. It's aside from maybe the eye placement, everything is pretty much traced. And this line art was probably one of the easiest line arts I've ever done because I did a refined sketch. Basically, just sketch what you want the final drawing to look like and don't leave anything up for interpretation. Make sure you define everything up to like the last fingernail because this will make line art so much easier. And let's show the colors and look at that. Wow, the drawing looks so clean. Imagine, imagine me trying to do this line art on the sketch draft, all right? The, the eye is gonna take me so long to draw because these eyes look nothing alike. Yeah, they're in the same position, but the whole point of the sketch draft is to show me the anatomy and stuff like that. It's not, like I never detailed the eye. So this eye, if I did it straight into line art, number one, it has to be as clean as it can look. And number two, I also have to draw it from scratch basically. All I know is the position of the eye and what angle it's at, but I'm just doing double the work for my line art stage. On to the worst part of drawing, line art. We all know what line art is, so I'm not gonna spend so much time on this segment. Line art is basically just the final lines of your drawing. The word you're going to associate with this step is refining. Refining basically just means to redraw the lines in your style, whether you like them to be clean or messy, whether you want the lines to be weighted, thick or thin, it all depends on your style. You are just basically going to be tracing the refined sketch to fit your preference. The important thing about this layer is preserve. Preserve basically everything you've done from the previous steps because you'll lose all the important elements you've worked on up to this point. This doesn't mean you can't delete anything or add anything, but just be careful when you do. Woo, now we're done line arting. Let's move on to the best parts of drawing, in my opinion, coloring. The first step in coloring is base color. This is probably like the easiest step. You're basically just filling in the lines. However, don't be fooled because there is something you should remember when you pick your colors. Be sure to double check the meaning of your colors, because since colors are the thing people notice the most, they can also make your artwork look a little off if you pick bad colors. So what do I mean by this? Let's look at this drawing I've been showing you guys so far, because there are a few mistakes. They might not be clear mistakes, but there are mistakes that I really don't like about this drawing. So let's see. Number one, take a look at the color of the hair and the shirt. These colors are pretty similar to each other. So when you look at this drawing from afar, it could be kind of difficult to like notice the shape about the shirt. Here, let's look at the shape of the shirt. So that is the shape of the shirt. But with the darkness of the hair as well, it's kind of visually hard to see that. So sometimes it's really easy to accidentally pick colors that might clash with each other. A good example of good color picking is with the eyes. When you look at the drawing, what is the first thing you are going to notice? And don't say boobs. It's going to be the face. Because when you look at someone, the first thing you're going to look at is their eyes or their face. So you want to draw the viewer's attention into their face. And the way you do this in art is by using saturated colors. Look at her eyes. They're probably the most saturated thing in this drawing. So I picked a very saturated colors just so viewers would look into the eyes immediately. But now onto another thing that might clash with these eyes is the gold chain that I'm trying to figure out. Her character design demands a gold chain from the purse, but the problem with this is that I can't find a gold that is unsaturated enough so that the viewer doesn't pay attention to it. 
Because look, when you look at this gold chain, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is look at it because, ooh, it's gold, it's pretty, but that's not the point of the chain. And it's very hard to find a color that might sit well with the drawing. So that is an example of two colors that might clash with each other. You usually just wanna save saturated colors for one element or like one part of your drawing. So yeah, this ties in with the green word I want you to remember, which is clarity. Because just like I showed you before, sometimes these colors can clash with each other and it can make your drawing feel less coherent. So just think to yourself what the purpose of these colors are and to make sure your artwork looks clear. Now that we have our base colors and we're happy with what we chose, we can now shade and add lighting to our character. Now, in my artistic opinion, shading is like 30% where the light source is coming from and 70% exaggerating the object's shadow parts to express the depth and dimension of the object. If you don't know how to shade, just check out the my how to shade video. It literally covers all the parts of a shadow and it shows you how to exaggerate those parts to express volume. Anyways, Shading doesn't have to be one for one accurate. It just needs to allow the viewer to have a sense of that object's volume. Form is basically the most important element of this step. And shaping just basically means you're shaping the object to look like the object. Wow. So let's look at this example, all right? So I'm going to hide the, um, I'm going to hide all of the color from that area. So what is missing? Well, that's kind of weird. Uh, the wrinkles from this shirt is missing, and so are her collarbones. Where'd they go? I express those elements of her through my shading. I basically, I basically f form her collarbones and her um, shirt wrinkles through my coloring or through my shading. So basically, the form in her shirt are two spheres, and then some triangles to three triangles that are supposed to look like um wrinkles. In my head, I thought to myself, this is where the light is coming from. Now let me, in my with my artistic abilities, just exaggerate those shadows to add volume to my objects. Same thing over here. As you can see, my shading is not too complicating. I basically just added a line of shading here and then I smoothed it out right here because when you smooth out shading, it basically means that that, I, that object is round or smooth. And let's also look at the indirect lighting. As you can see, the indirect lighting is bending to the shape of like the clothing. It's As you can see, it's like warping as well. It's following the shape of the clothing, which also adds to its form. It's easier to understand um, an object's form when you break it down into simple shapes. Remember in the sketch draft uh, example that I gave, I basically broke down my character into simple shapes. And just like I was doing earlier with this drawing too, just break your object down into simple shapes. Like up here, her head is a sphere. So over here, I have some shading that, gra that I have a gradient right here that goes from light to dark because on spheres, um, you already know that it's going to go from light to dark in like a soft gradient kind of form. Over here, same with the chest. As you can see, it literally looks like, if I were to just like section off this part of the drawing, if I were just to section this part of the drawing off, it looks like I'm just practicing a sphere. I, I'm just practicing how to shade a sphere. But in reality, it's just a bigger part of a bigger picture. Same thing with the hands. The three parts of the palm are just three different triangles or just three different like polygons. I have that polygon. I have that polygon and I have this polygon. These two polygons are kind of connected with each other. But I just basically have three polygons right here and then this empty space shape right here. With this arm, it's not even anything complicating. I just added like a like pillow shading right here and then I added shading right here and then I blurred it in the middle of this part like a sphere. And if you want to learn how to do that, just check out the how to shade video, okay? I promise you that is a very detailed video, more detailed than what I'm saying here. Now, since we've completed all these steps, at this point, your drawing is pretty much finished. The next step is just post effects, which is pretty much just an optional st uh, an optional step. You can just call it a day at this point. But if you like doing effects, then just keep watching. So what I mean by effects is stuff like extra lighting, filters, blurs, lens effects, whatnot. 
This step doesn't have any green or red words to it because the point of this step is just to enhance all the green words of the previous steps. And I'll show you some effects that I do that are able to enhance the, uh, these elements in my drawings. So as you can see, I have a pretty much completed drawing at this point. So now it's just on to the post effects. What I decided for this drawing was that I wanted a neon blue light to come from uh, the bottom. And here's the result of that effect. So as you can see, the hair by itself already looked like it was like a triangle. Like it had really good form with some shading here. But what this lighting did is that it, um, it enhanced the form of my sixth step by making it so that instead of a triangle now, now it looks more like a pyramid. As you can see, this side of the half is lighting, is lighted up, while this side is just pretty default. So as you can see, I did it for all the hair strands that look like triangles just to add more form and volume to my hair. So here's another version of the same drawing. Pretty much what I did here is that I added a filter, which is a multiply layer with this color on it. And then I added just a white glow behind her head. Well, what this pretty much does is that it just enhances the, the meaning of my color. So instead of my character kind of being just in default lighting, like it's not boring, but it's like, yep, default lighting. I added her more to like, maybe you can imagine her being like, like in a dark alley or a dark city. Another thing is the glow on her head also helps with the form of the drawing because as you can see, there are hair buns on her head, which are in the shape of spheres basically. And I'm adding glow to the back of these spheres. So, or spheres. So this part's shaded while this part is glowing. And this just enhances the form of those buns because there's lighting coming back from here and this looks like a sphere. So yeah. Here's another example of like that glowing effect. As you can see, this entire part of the crown is glowed, which is one face of that crown. It helps the viewer understand visually what one of the sides of the crown look like. It's like lighting up a side of a cube to help the viewer understand which way the cube is facing. And then the same thing with her head, it's a sphere. And then when you like light a sphere, if the light source is coming from behind, it's kind of like a, like a moon croissant kind of thing. Other examples is that like when you add a lens flare, usually you can use lens flares to like affect the composition by maybe adding that lens flare in like an empty space of your drawing. If it feels like kind of empty, you could just add a lens flare to fill up some spots of that drawing. Uh, blurs also affect composition. If something like is super close to the camera or something super far, or out of focus in general. Sometimes people blur it, which could, you know, affect the composition of the drawing. And yeah, that's pretty much effects. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you today. Remember that if you end up going out of order or you skip some steps, your drawing session will feel like a drag and you'll just be making it harder on yourself. And just a reminder that these tutorials should be treated more like a guidance or a reference and less like a strict way of doing stuff. Art should be fun and I'm only here to show you what I've learned over my art career. If you like the brushes I use during this video, or you want to use the brushes that I use for my drawings, check out my Patreon. If you like the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe and comment some art tips you have for other beginners. So yeah, that's it. I'll see you in the next video. See ya!